Hello, Nicolas Janselm. Uh, I'm working as an API security engineer at Salt. I've started about uh, a year ago there. And um, what I've seen is that API security was not the main priority of most of the organization that we are meeting. So um, I've done about 100 pen tests dedicated on APIs. And I will be sharing today some of the myths that, um, that we are seeing and uh, that, uh, um, that some of the organization that we are, are meeting with have. So just three facts before we start. What we have seen is that every endpoint is an opportunity uh, for hackers. We have seen many out of thousands of endpoints or hundreds of thousands of endpoints, API that had one flow that broke security for all the other ones. A uh, couple of examples. Some API token from pre-production, from QA, that also work on production. And you can open a thousand accounts in pre-production and then take over in production. Uh, I saw that on a global 2,000 customer last week. Or just using encrypted IDs, but somewhere there is one API that gives internal IDs to encrypted ID matching. And with that, then you can try on any other endpoint. So, yeah, you just need one that has a major flow to, to lead to, to massive impact. The second is the security tools, the solution that we are seeing in place. Uh, they are looking for known bad behavior. They don't understand the business logic or the context, and they are, don't, they are not protected effectively. And the last one is, there is an approach that exists for over 10 years that is, let's try hard in pre-production, in QA, in design, to test all the possibilities to make sure that we have an API that have no flaws. Uh, it's good, but it ultimately does not, al al does not always work. We see that up to 30% of the use cases are tested, and there is a vast majority that is still not tested. So let me illustrate that with the, the five myths that we will cover today. The first one is, yeah, uh, I already have a secure infrastructure. I have a, a web application firewall. Uh, they have added some fe security features. So that's OK. I won't have any APIs attack. So I see some phase that I've seen this morning, but it will be just a couple of slides that are the same as this morning. Uh, the, the biggest flow on the OWASP API top 10 is authorization broken at the object level. So 95% of the attacks are authenticated, are encrypted over HTTPS, but happen on the very last mile, on the object, because I'm authenticated, but I'm trying to get access to other user objects. And that's the most common flow that we have seen in our pen tests. A third of the pen tests that we have done have shown such flow, allowing to access to other users, or to perform some operation for other users. And it's very, very hard to detect this um, just at the runtime by looking at characteristic, because it's perfectly valid against the specification. Two packets look just perfectly normal. One is to look at my own account, and I have permission for that. And the other one is looking at another user account, and it's not, it should not be allowed. It's very hard to distinguish the two without context. And the latest one is the business impact. We see that successful OWASP API when attacked have allowed to do massive data exfiltration. Yesterday it was Mercedes that had 130,000 user data that have been exfiltrated. We have seen that on Twitter and many other ones up to us in September. And we, we get some more in the news or some that are not in the news on a weekly basis. Also manipulation. If I can see your object, maybe I can also alter it and operation for other user or even full account takeover. Uh, a couple of uh, illustrations here. This one comes from a, a bank in, uh, in Netherlands where I've opened a bank account <coughs> during a pen test and I've identified that looking at my details on the, the web app, I had this customer number and uh, uh, I could get uh, the date of birth, uh, the uh, the passport number, the address, all the details that was required to open the account. So I wondered, uh, can I get access to other customer details just by changing the ID I'm trying to get? And the answer was yes. Uh, 
I was authenticated. I had a proper OAuth O2 token, and I was able to enumerate different IDs. So it doesn't mean that all the security is bad and nothing has been done well, but for this specific endpoint, that was an endpoint for the English user, which are not the most common one. There was the flow. For the uh, native speaking of the country, the flow didn't exist. But for this one, just one, the flow was there, and I had access to all the users, not just the non uh, uh, netherlands speaking uh, users. So sometimes it's just adding a new features that breaks everything that have been done well before. So here, an attacker would have done a full database exfiltration with all the details that allow to open a bank account. So leading to frauds and a lot of uh, damage for the, the reputation of the company. A second one is here on the service provider for a fraud use case. So as a normal user, I've just surfed the, the shop I've looked at the phones, I put one into my basket, and then I've modified my basket by setting two phones, and I've seen how the communication was made to, to modify the basket. And in the response, I saw that there was a total price and a total paid. So as an attacker, the first yeah, idea is, okay, what if I sent not three phones, but just a total paid of the total amount? I have access to the object, it's, it's expected, it's my object, but I should never have access to the payments. It's the payment API that should be able to modify this parameter. But here it was not checked, and it set my balance to zero, so nothing to pay, and it was seen as, a, as paid, even if it never seen my credit card before. I see some smiles that, that look trivial. Uh, something we see, some, some attacks that are more advanced, but. I wanted to, to keep it simple on some simple use case that we have seen uh, on the while. So as you can see, these packets don't have intrinsic signatures. There is not an anomaly that you can have a, a signature or a rule for upfront. You need to understand what is the business logic. How many times a user is accessing distinct account in his session? What are the parameters that he, he, he sends when he's updating his card to detect such deviation? And that's what we see. Uh, the solutions that are uh, just using a VM uh, are looking at a, a few minutes or single packet data, like, OK, do I have something that is executed on the database or on the server and that has a, a signature for? But it doesn't work for business attack like we have seen. So what SALT is providing is cloud-scale big data. So we can look at the characteristic of your traffic over weeks to detect even the low and slow attack. If an attacker see the first flow that I've seen and see that there is some solution in place, he will determine how many customers can he exfiltrate over a minute without being detected. Maybe it's just five. OK, he will have it running for weeks. We sold, we will detect what is the normal traffic over a minute, 10 minutes, an hour, a day, a week, to detect such low and flow attack and block them. How do we do that? On each packet, and you can have billion per day or per month, we will look at structural metadata, meaning we will look at what is this field? What kind of data do we have in this field? Okay, it's an integer. Um, we will look at some behavioral attribute, like um, how many times do we call this endpoint over a session? What is the flow? So first he authenticates, then uh, he gets details regarding the account, then the balance. All that is always the case because it's the way the web app works or the mobile app works. And we will also get correlation, like we have a, a JSON web token, and inside this token we have a customer ID. And when the customer is looking at an account, it's always the same ID. So we are learning such correlation. And we are doing that over weeks. So we can detect when an attacker is misbehaving, sometime in a single packet and sometime over a long period of time. And this is why if you just have one minute window or single packet analysis, you cannot scale and you cannot deliver uh, what is needed to block such attack. And Gartners have made a, an update to their API analysis a, a few weeks ago. 
and they confirm that what we are seeing on the field is that general purpose application security solutions are ineffective against such attack. And that's why we continue to see frauds, the attacks, filtration, and account takeover. And the OWASP also uh, confirmed that WAF solutions are not sufficient to protect critical applications. The second, uh, uh, the second uh, midbuster uh, is a question that we had in the in the session this morning. Okay, but what my API gateway, what my IAM is doing, and these solutions are very useful, and they are providing a great level of authentication, making sure that users actually get authenticated. But what we see is that most of the the attacker are authenticated, 95% of the attacks are authenticated. And when we look at the OWASP API top 10, we have covered deeply the OWASP API one. I won't be able to do all the top 10. If you want to have more, please come on the, on the booth. I'd be happy to, to deep dive. But no solution before Salt is able to extensively cover all the OWASP API top 10 scenarios. And a simple one that I had uh, in Italy a couple of, uh, of days ago. Something as simple as updating another user ID mail address. If you think about it, I'm just modifying an object. I'm fully in line with what is defined in the schema. So schema validation doesn't help. And what I do here is I update the mail of another user. Next step, I just tell, I've lost my account, and the account takeover is done. How do you detect that? If you don't detect that the user here updated is not the one I'm connected to, I've just requested, if you don't have the context. And IAM does a lot of great things, and API Gateway too, but they don't cover such a use case. The third one that is also uh, something that we we are seeing a lot uh, when we are uh, talking with, uh, with DevOps is uh, we have a mature pipeline uh, and the, the life cycle of the secure development uh, help us to, to address all the API security issue. Uh, still, we are seeing very mature uh, state-of-the-art companies that are living by API. If you look at Facebook, uh, they do advertisement, uh, AI, and API. Basically, that's the three, three things that they do. And they are very mature. They, are, they have adopted a state-of-the-art technology like GraphQL very early, but still they've been breached. API is not just about uh, doing a secure design. If you want to ensure API security, you have to start at the, style, the, the planning phase by making sure that your specifications are state-of-the-art. Also, by testing your application with contextual information. So knowing this is an API that is used for authentication and you will test it differently than an API that is used uh, to manage the user data. So the testing, if you don't want to have billions of tests that don't cover all the use cases, you need to have some context in order to target efficiently the APIs. The next one is the discovery and data classification. On a weekly basis, I see a password in response on public API, or token on some endpoint that are not used for authentication, or credit cards that are unmasked. If you don't have automatic learning on hundreds and thousands of API, you, you won't scale, especially more if you have sprint and weekly changes. You cannot make sure that you are extensively knowledge of your APIs. And the last one is the runtime. Uh, knowing what is the normal behavior, what is the business logic of your APIs, and when an attacker is drifting from this logic and trying to misbehave, so you can block it. This one is something that we are seeing, even if it's more rare, is, okay, but I send all the logs to my sim or to Elastic. And we have seen a lot of organizations trying to do so. But the bad news is that 99% of the anomalies in terms of behavior are normal. And you don't want to be alerted on that. So you have to have AI and, uh, and big data that is focusing on what are the actual 
OWASP API top 10 scenarios to make sure that you don't get tons of messages that are useless and that you don't see the actual attacks. Another one is, yeah, but API security is so complicated. So how do I start? So what we recommend is a simple three steps. Know your API, discover them quickly and continuously to make sure that you are under control of all your APIs, endpoints, and sensitive data. Protecting your data, your APIs, so learning what is the business logic, and the soul can do that within four hours uh, by extracting hundreds of metadata on each transaction and immediately detect attackers so you can block them. And finally, shift left to improve your security posture. And shifting left is something that a lot of people use but it's very easy to raise you 10,000 things to change, and you won't do it, or it will take years. What is important is to start with what is actually targeted by attackers, what is the highest severity, and that was sold as. Based on what is detected at runtime, what attackers are targeted, we are recommended to start with that and to start to remediate on this. Yeah.